Hello again. Well, I seem to have accidentally gathered several new subscribers, which makes me feel very guilty because I've not uploaded any new content for a bit. Unfortunately, I'm currently about to go under the knife to deal with the labral tear, but on the plus side, that should mean that I have some more free time to get some content finished off and loaded up, hopefully. Now, not so long ago, Michael at Vsauce uploaded a video in which he claimed this. Modern day flat earthers have picked up where Volava left off. They have quite good explanations for any evidence you throw at them that the Earth is round. Whoa, hold on there, Mikey. Good explanations? Are you certain about that? Clearly, Michael hasn't had to deal with many flat earthers in his life. I know that many people are amused by the hate mail they get, but believe me, until you get comments from the Flat Earth Brigade, you haven't seen anything. For a quick example of a flat earth response to a demonstration of how the Earth can't be flat, and how it fails to be in any way a good explanation. Let's have a look at someone I can only assume to have been ironically named Dina Sharp and her objections to the Pole Stars conundrum. She says, You claim we have two Pole Stars, but that is not true. We have one Pole Star, which is called Polaris. Sometimes some people refer to Sigma Octantis as the South Pole Star, but this is not something universally accepted in the scientific community. Assuming that the Earth is an oblate spheroid, and that the Earth has two poles, Sigma Octantis is not even located above what would be considered the South Pole. It is a faint light, and is hardly stationary in the same way that the North Star Polaris appears, from our perspective. Well, there are two minor problems with this idiotic objection, Dina. Firstly, by your definition, even Polaris isn't a pole star, because it doesn't sit directly above the North Pole as is easily evidenced if you watch it throughout the night keenly, since it will describe an arc in the sky with a radius of 0.7 degrees and a maximum width of around 1.5 degrees. That's easy to see in a long exposure photograph. You've never looked up, have you, Dina? But then you later add a reference from Wikipedia that leads us on to the big problem with your objection. The South Celestial Pole currently lacks a bright star like Polaris to mark its position. At present, the naked eye star nearest to this imaginary point is the faint Sigma Octantis, which is sometimes known as the South Star. Yes, the stars to the south appear to rotate around a central point where Polaris doesn't exist. So, Dina, let me explain the problem for you again, in baby steps, just so you understand it, and without you having the ability to weasel your way around it. Everywhere north of the equator I have to look due north to find the stars rotating counterclockwise around a central point, something I don't see anywhere south of the equator when I look north. And everywhere south of the equator I have to look due south to find the stars rotating clockwise around a central point, something I don't see anywhere north of the equator when I look south. Again, if I'm north of the equator here, I have to look north to find this central point, and if I'm stood here, I also have to look north, and here, and here, and here. And if I'm south of the equator here, I have to look in this direction to find the central point around which the stars rotate. But if I'm south of the equator here, I have to look in this direction and I see those exact same stars. And here, I look in this direction and see the exact same stars, and here in this direction, and here in this direction, and everywhere south of the equator I have to look due south from my position to find a central point around which the same stars rotate that everyone else sees south of the equator, even though they're looking in a different direction from me according to your flat Earth. Do you get it yet, you geometrically illiterate morons? Do you need me to hold your hand and guide you through something that five-year-olds can grasp? In order for your flat earth to be true, this can't be the case, and I would see the stars south of the equator not rotating around a central point to the south no matter where I stand, but traversing across the horizon. But nobody sees this. So the only way for the flat earth to be true relies on the claim of there only being one central point around which the stars rotate to be true. However, that point must then magically jump to the opposite end of the sky, and the stars must magically rotate in the opposite direction 
depending on which side of the equator I'm standing on. I keep making this very simple point and you keep failing to answer it. Why is that? Is basic geometry beyond your grasp? Another Flat Earth proponent, Caesar, has decided to claim that the sky is a mirror. Well, that's easily shown to be rubbish because for one thing, if it were a concave mirror, the stars would appear as streaks of light across the horizon and not the pinpoints they demonstrably are. Even better than that though, the constellations around the two central points aren't mirror images of each other, which we can see by flipping either of the images in any direction we want and watching them not match up to each other. And this idiotic attempt at an answer still fails to explain why everybody south of the equator will be looking in completely different directions and seeing the exact same stars rotate in the exact same direction around the exact same central point in the sky. If you want to have fun, just mention this to a flat earther and watch them completely fail to provide you with anything near a valid response. Most of the time they won't even acknowledge it. I think we can clearly state that the flat earthers do not come up with good explanations to the many actual geometric facts that disprove a flat earth and we're going to continue looking at more of those facts and how there are no valid Flat Earth responses to them very soon. Now, on a related note, I've often found, after their rubbish has been buried back up their backside, Flat Earthers often complain that either Geometry is a lie, or Geometry is a conspiracy, or the geometric equations somehow magically don't prove anything. Hmm. Well, that presents two problems for our Flat Earth friends. Firstly, the equations and geometry work and I can demonstrate it very easily, especially since they are nothing more complicated than the geometry children learn at the ages of 12 to 15, exposing just how geometrically illiterate our Flat Earth friends are if they think this is a valid argument. Secondly, it invalidates every argument they try to make regarding the shape of the Earth. If geometry is some magical lie or conspiracy, then none of your failed attempts at geometric arguments work either, thus making your entire argument, the Earth is flat because I want it to be. Uh, no. Because I often hear this pathetic attempt at a non-argument, I'm going to soon upload a short series going through some of the even more basic geometry, explaining things like what trig functions are, how they work, and why they aren't just something invented by a conspiracy to shit on the childish beliefs of the perpetually ignorant Flat Earth idiots, but are actual facts. Now, as a very final point, I've often found that Flat Earthers, when they realise that they have no arguments against the geometric facts that prove the Earth isn't flat, begin making arguments against the motion of the Earth. Now, don't get me wrong, I'll happily shove all your moronic arguments about your inability to grasp basic physics back where the sun doesn't shine, guys, but these arguments have got nothing to do with the shape of the Earth. Even the geocentrists know this, and when Fernie Boy can claim to be more intelligent than you, your life has officially hit rock bottom. For all the shape of the Earth cares, it could be sitting motionless, not moving at all, and it will still be round. Why? Put a tennis ball on a table. The tennis ball isn't moving. Has it stopped being a ball? No. So why do you think the facts that prove the Earth is a spheroid would disappear if the Earth wasn't moving? Why the f*** do you think the Earth can't be a ball if it doesn't move? Answer? No reason. You're just a bunch of desperate morons clutching at every non-sequitur straw you can. But thank you, because as soon as you come out with those arguments, you demonstrate to the whole world that not only do you not have any valid arguments for the shape of the Earth, but you wouldn't even know how to find out the shape of the Earth in the first place. And at that point, the case against the Flat Earth is pretty much settled. But don't worry, we'll go through more facts that bury this stupid idea throughout the series. Thanks for watching.